What's up guys? Welcome back to October Horror Fest. Tonight we move into a house plagued by a violent curse. Yes, it's Grudge Night. So this one's actually an American remake of Juon, a Japanese horror film about some violent murders that turn a family home into a house of horror. So Matt and Jennifer Williams move into a house in Tokyo with Matt's mother Emma, who suffers from dementia. Not long after, they sense that something just isn't right with the house. Yoko, a caretaker, is sent to stay with them and care for Emma. Once she arrives, she finds Emma alone and then goes to investigate. Alright, who the hell would do that? I mean, maybe you should just wait outside and call the cops like a normal person. But, you know, who am I to judge? She finds a closet with a door leading up into the attic and gets dragged up there by a sketchy shadow bitch. Yeah, well, told you to wait outside, didn't I? And now you're probably dead, Yoko. Good for you. So Karen is a colleague of Yoko's who travels to Tokyo to replace her after she goes missing. Hmm, they don't file like a missing person report or anything, they're just like, eh, fuck it, just send another one. She heads to the Williams house to find Emma in a catatonic state and soon discovers a young pale boy in a closet upstairs. Well, that's not weird at all. And apparently he only makes cat noises. <coughs> Then Karen sees the shadow woman appear and try to kill Emma. Sometime later, Alex, Karen's boss, shows up, and he's like, where the hell's all my staff at? Well, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't send them all to their death. How about that? Anyway, so Alex finds Emma dead, and then finds Karen in shock. The police finally get called in, yeah, after the fact, and they find Matt and Jennifer's bodies in the attic, along with some random person's jawbone. Yep, they don't even seem phased by that. They're just like, oh, here's a jawbone. All right. Back in America, Alex is leaving work one night when Yoko shows up without a jaw and kills him. Mmm, yep. So the other two just get killed normally and she gets her jaw ripped off? That seems a little unfair to me. Karen begins to get haunted by the same ghostly woman and researches the house. She finds out that the ghost woman is named Kayako, who was murdered by her husband years prior due to him suspecting her of cheating. She was in love with, like, this college professor, and then she, like, wrote about him in a diary, and he found it, and then shit just didn't end well for anybody, really. He killed her in a violent rage, and then also killed their son and the family cat. Really? Like, I get it, kill her, whatever, but the son and the fucking cat? Like, at least, like, you know, let the cat live. Meow! <coughs> So I actually looked up why he makes the cat sound, and it's because Toshio, who's the son, and the cat were both drowned in the same bathtub. And when they died, their souls, like, merged together, I guess. So anyway, their deaths created a curse that follows anyone who enters the house. Kayako appears and kills you, like, you know, the Williams, and then Yoko, and then the husband too, actually. Karen tells her boyfriend Doug about the curse, and he goes there to find her. But when Karen shows up, Doug's all fucked up like Emma was, and then Kayako's about to kill him. Karen tries to save Doug, but he basically dies from shock like a little bitch. And then she finds like a random gas can and sets the house on fire, and hopes to stop the curse once and for all. But in the end, she realizes that the house survived the fire, and that Kayako has followed her home. Well yeah, what the hell did you expect? Didn't you do the research? That was the grudge. You think that was bad? Kayako's coming back tomorrow night for the sequel. See you then.